Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're gonna build the best gaming PC on the $900 you can get in early 2021. Now, I am saying early 2021 because the RTX 3060 is hopefully gonna start popping up by the end of February. And so if you're watching this video in March or later, there's gonna be a faster budget TPU available. But yeah, more on that later. Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna go through the whole building process of this PC from start to finish. And we're going to look at what kind of frame rate or FPS you can expect in case you decide to build this very own gaming computer. Now, if you find anything you like, all PC parts are linked up down below. So spending about $800 will give you a gaming rig that is capable of running most games at both 1080p as well as 1440p with great frame rate. And just a sneak peek at the performance shows that we're able to run Call of Duty Warzone at both 1080 and 1440p with fantastic frame rate. Anyway, inside this PC we find the name the Ryzen 5 3600 processor. This is a 6 core processor that is based off of AMD's insanely popular and to architecture and to get as much performance out of the cpu we're gonna pair it with this popular 3200 megahertz rated memory sticks with 16 gigabyte from corsair and for the rest of the system we find a 500 gigabyte m.2 sata drive from kingston as well as an rtx 2060 graphics card from nvidia everything contained inside this budget high airflow fatx case Anyway guys, timestamps can be found down below. Now before we get started, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video, drop a like if you enjoy the content and make sure to subscribe to never miss an upcoming PC build. So let's get started with our $63 motherboard. This is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H and I chose this because of two main reasons, reliability and price to performance. So for around $60 to $70, you're getting a lot of quality and features. So far, I haven't been able to find a motherboard that's been able to beat the DS3H from Gigabyte. Now as a bonus, you find 8 USB ports here as well as an M.2 slot. Now by picking up a budget motherboard, we're gonna be able to spend more of our budget on GPU and CPU, which will give us a faster gaming machine with less stutter and a smoother gaming experience. Moving on to the processor, I chose the Ryzen 5 3600 and this one comes with 6 cores and 12 threads with the base clock at 3.6 and a 4.2 GHz turbo. Now if we take a quick look at the raw gaming performance and we compare it with some of the other popular picks out there, we're seeing healthy numbers for the 3600 and this is thanks to Zen 2's low latency and high IPC. And as we can see, at 1080p it performs very similar to Intel's latest 10400 Core i5 Comet Lake counterpart. And if we step up to 1440p for example, we quickly see that the CPU isn't that much important any longer. We're gonna use the processor cooler that comes included in the box. Now while this heatsink doesn't offer the best thermals and noise levels among other CPU coolers available, it's still perfectly good enough for gaming and a case with good airflow. Now as we can see guys, our motherboard comes with the retention frame pre-installed but since we're using a cooler with springs, we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard and we do so by unscrewing the four screws holding it in place. With the retention frame removed, ensure that the backplate remains in position with the holes on the motherboard. So let's install the processor, which is very easy. You want to locate this golden triangle and this lines up with the triangle on a motherboard socket. Simply turn the CPU so that the triangles match up, then you open the metal arm, you drop the processor into the socket, you put the metal arm down and our CPU is installed. The cooler installment is also pretty simple. This is the first time installing the CPU cooler, it should have some thermal grease be applied and in that case you don't need to apply some thermal a compound on the CPU lid. Position the CPU cooler over the four spring screws and using a screwdriver turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler further tightening each spring screw with the full turn and with all four spring Spring screws connected to the backplate, tighten them until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, we connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. 
Next up, we're gonna need some memory and for today's build, we're gonna go with these 16GB Vengeance RGB Pro RAM sticks from Popular Corsair. Now 16GB is more than enough for gaming in 2021. Now this 3200MHz kit I shows will give you a bit of a frame rate boost versus a slower clock kit as the way that the CPU operates, having faster clock RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. To install this, we're going to populate the gray slot, so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug them in just like so. Next up, we're gonna install our M.2 drive. This is the A2000 coming from Kingston. You wanna locate the M.2 slot and you find this right underneath the CPU cooler. So what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so, then gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with the little notch on the opposite side of the cooler just like so. Finally take the little screw just like so, hold it down just like that and screw it down until it stops. Now we have reached the point where the real fun starts, it is time to install a motherboard assembly if you like inside our chassis and for today's build we're gonna go with the Fantex Eclipse P300A coming in at $59. This is hands down the best and cheapest mid tower case with high airflow that I've come across this far. It comes with a single 120mm fan installed at the rear and there is room to fit another one at the top and two additional ones at the front all to help keep our system cool and quiet. Now in the front here as you can see guys there is no glass, plastic cover or dust filter covering the airflow, there is just a giant perforated metal front and right underneath the uh, tempered glass side panel we find a small white LED strip and overall guys I'm very satisfied with this case. Well done Fantex. And here is an example what the system sound like when gaming. So first, before we install a motherboard, we have to prep the case. And we start with these two thumb screws holding the tempered glass side panel. Next thing, we're gonna install our IO shield that we find in our motherboard box. And this one goes in from the back of the case with these uh, circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now with the CPU cooler installed, we can grab onto the CPU fan and slide the motherboard into place. And I prefer having the case laying down as I'm installing and securing the motherboard. And we're gonna use the screws that comes provided from Fantex here. And with the motherboard installed, uh, before we move on to our power supply and graphics card, now is actually a good time to install our chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. So let's start with USB 3, this is a wide connector, it is fairly thick and impossible to miss. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. The connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we got front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, before we're done, we got the front panel connectors. This can be a bit tricky, guys. And uh, yeah, you find these on the lower right side. For the power supply, we once again gonna go with the Corsair CV 550W unit. This is a high quality power supply with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification coming in at $58. I've been using this unit in many of my PC builds without ever running into any issues. Now as you're installing this, you wanna make sure you got the fan facing downwards, then simply slide the PSU into place and secure it. There are a couple of cables we're gonna need here. First up is the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now it is finally time to install a graphics card and in today's build we found an RTX 2060 which yeah is a brilliant 1440p GPU but that being said I know some of you guys might be thinking why a GPU from 2019 in a PC build in 2021? Well that is because we're right in the middle of yet another mining craze and it can be hard finding a brand new Nvidia Ampere based GPU right now. Now this GPU comes with 6GB of G6 memory which actually is enough for 4K gaming in less than morning titles but for games such as Cyberpunk I recommend selling for 1080 or 1440p at most. 
Now, in order to install a graphics card, we first need to remove these two PCE brackets that we can plug in our graphics card just like so. Then take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics card just like so. And what is left to do now is to whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $800 gaming PC build. And if you did everything right, your system should power on. So let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. Oh, also guys, I almost forgot, first time you're booting up the system, make sure to double check that the RAM sticks are running in its XMP profile. And we're doing this by uh, tapping delete while we're seeing the Gigabyte logo. We then head over to the overclocking session. We select profile one and we are now good to go. Starting with Cyberpunk 2077, I found a pretty good sweet spot where I'm averaging between 50 to 60 FPS, running around in the game at 1080p, with everything at high to ultra settings, with ray tracing set to medium. However, that requires that you activate something called DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it turns out that DLSS plays a huge role in this title. By deactivating this results in about 40 to 50 FPS, so it is clear that this one does a tremendous job keeping up the frame rate. Moving on to more eSport like games, we see that our system performs great at both 1080 as well as 1440p in both Apex, Fortnite, PUBG, but even Call of Duty Warzone runs with an average of over 120 FPS at 1080p and close to 80 FPS at 1440p, all with high level of details. Moving on to Battlefield 5 and to make things a bit more interesting, I decided to throw in a few additional GPUs to give you guys a better idea how our system stand against some other popular GPU picks out there. And as we can see in this title, our system has no problem reaching a satisfying frame rate even at 1440p. Now Doom Eternal as well as Death Stranding are two other popular games where our system has no problems even at 1440p resolution. That all being said games such as Red Dead Redemption 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we can see that our system is struggling a bit. Keep in mind guys, we are running with very high settings here, so dropping the settings just a slight bit, that should lead to 60 FPS gameplay for sure. And the same goes for Dirt 5, Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as control as well. And again guys, all components we just went over can be found down below. Now I am starting up a Discord server and it would mean the world to me if you guys wanted to join. And here we can discuss PC builds and issues and everything in between. Now I'm going to hang out here and answer any questions you guys might have. So you definitely want to join up. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.